small talk. The romantic poet Shelley is famous for saying, poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world, hence the inspiration for this presentation. Write a poem and rule the world. <laughs> in a nutshell, here's Shelley's point. The words we use, the language we live inside, literally produces the fabric of our world. World follows word. The common sense view is that language is something we add to the world. But poets believe the opposite, that self and word, world rather, are the results of the words we use. We are not made of flesh, we are made of words. What this means is that when you make art, when you create a genuinely original poem, you, original, you literally remake the world you inhabit. Here's a quick example of how language determines the real. I had a professor of classics who was asked if the ancient Greeks had a word for homosexuality. This was his reply. If it wasn't on their tongues, it wasn't in their heads. In other words, if the Greeks didn't have a word for something, it just wasn't part of their world. Turns, turns out the Greeks had no word for homosexuality because it, they did not regard sexual orientation as a worthwhile social identifier. The Greeks didn't know they were homosexuals. The Victorians decided they were. Why this little lesson in language theory? Simply to illustrate Shelley's point that poets legislate the real into existence. Now you may not want to rule the world, but who wouldn't want a greater say in ruling their world? And the best way to do this is to take up poetry. Yes, my friends, it's true. Based on my modest experience as a poet, I'm here to offer you three, three surefire tips guaranteed to maximize your potential to take over the legislation of your reality. First, it's vitally important that you recognize the two key organs are involved in the creation of poetry the brain and the heart. You've been alive long enough to know that these two do not always play well together. <laughs> it has been said that the heart knows what the mind cannot understand. This is wrong. The heart knows what the heart knows. And what does the heart know? Basically, it knows what every other heart knows. And that's the problem. The heart is the great vessel and storehouse of dead metaphor. No heart has ever met a cliché it didn't love. You must therefore stop listening to your heart. The heart writes terrible poetry. <laughs> the second thing you need to do before writing a poem, never mind sharing it with the world, is to start reading poetry, lots of it, and not just your own. <laughs> no poem worth reading sprang from the brow of its creator whole. It is true that the aim of poetry is to make something new, but to make something genuinely new, you need a firm understanding of what's old. Finally, the hardest lesson of all to learn. Know your audience. Many are first drawn to poetry in the green and salad days of their youth under the mistaken assumption that the world is waiting to hear what you have to say. <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> and it's only getting worse. When I published my first book of poetry in 2001, it, it was reviewed in print 11 times. My last book, a much better book than my first, was reviewed once. The attention of the world has turned elsewhere. <laughs> is this bad news? Possibly. I don't think it is. Recall that Shelley used the word unacknowledged to characterize poets. Lack of acknowledgement is built into the poet's contract with the world. It comes with the territory. So to be a poet, you must not only make peace with the fact that no one really cares, you must learn to embrace that fact. And by embrace it, I mean come to appreciate that learning to speak the world into being through art and craft doesn't really require an audience. Indeed, your audience, in a way, is your greatest enemy. Why? Because your audience is, not unlike, yes, a great pack of zombies. <laughs> that is, they are one mind, one great impressionable heart, and therefore fundamentally unreliable when it comes to directing the course your art must take. 
So, there you have it. Three rules guaranteed to help you legislate new worlds into being through the gentle art of poetry. Go forth! Create! And rules of art!